welcome back. Uh, so today's video, not going to be a super fun video, build video or anything like that. We're going over a topic that I did not want to have to make a video about, uh, but it's in regards to laser cut parts. Um, so I think it's something that uh, if you are actively building, especially a newer kit that was produced, had any parts produced in 2022, uh, you need to be aware of it. And I don't think it's getting the, the total attention that it should, uh, both on the builder side as well as on the advanced aircraft side. Um, so, if you follow the forums online, there's been an active thread where people have been talking about these laser cut parts. Um, as we know, or as a lot of you know, uh, these laser cut parts are having issues uh, with, with cracking occurring. And whether that crack occurs uh, during the dimpling process or during the riveting process, either way, these laser cut parts made in 2022 were provided by a vendor who allowed for sloppy tolerances in some way, whether it was the way they laser cut that hole, whatever, um, summed up, a lot of the parts produced uh, have inconsistencies that are making them much more likely to have cracks than any other parts. So uh, again, earlier this week, Greg Hughes over at Vans Aircraft uh, had a great response that I thought was a, a great response to the problem, where he mentioned, quote, one of the fundamental aspects of total performance at Vans is our commitment to quality and your confidence. As has always been the case, we will replace any parts that people are not confident in. If you have parts with visible issues, please email support at vansaircraft.com with photos and part numbers. And then he also mentioned that there's going to be a further statement released later on going into a little bit more detail. So sure enough, yesterday um, he released that statement, uh, which was goes over a whole bunch of information about laser cut parts, what the issues were, how we got to today, what Vans has done up until this point to assure uh, the quality safe product. Uh, but also, at the end of it, reiterating uh, that those of us with issues with parts, we'd be able to have those issues or those parts replaced. Yeah. So anyways, I thought it was a great post. Um, it brought a lot of worry to me though, um, especially given the other posts that were then found in that forum thread about people who have laser cut parts who are having serious issues, whether it's ahead of time or right at the beginning of prepping them and then cracking right at dimpling, or the more scary one, which I'm scared of, is people who are creating that parts are not seeing cracks right away. They go to rivet and they make a beautiful section, come back later on and find upwards of 20% of those rivets, or of those dimpled, uh, dimpled parts having cracks in them. And I am no expert by any means on airplanes. I'm not an a and I'm not an engineer. I'm a real estate agent. I know nothing, of, <laughs> nothing about airplane stuff other than cracks are bad. Up until this point from Vans, Cracks are bad, cracks are bad, don't allow cracks to happen, deburrow the holes, do everything you can to prevent cracks, because cracking is bad. So earlier in the year, I remember Vans released another, uh, uh, released additional information about cracking in section five, and they all of a sudden now allow cracking to a certain extent. Now that you follow up on it, read it, so you can get familiar with it, but it's great information about cracking, and now all of a sudden cracking is kind of, it's, it's still bad, uh, but, not the end of the world according to that section as long as you're able to, to handle it uh, per their instruction. Again, cracks are bad. Section 5 was, was changed to also now allow cracks to occur to a certain extent. Uh, but anyways, cracks are still bad. I don't want cracks in my airframe. I don't want cracks at all. Um, and jumping forward into my experience now with laser cut parts, I only have one experience so far and that was with the fuel tanks. And I didn't mention it in a previous video because Vance took care of me, um, and I didn't think it was worth mentioning. But I did have, that was the one part that I did receive, was a batch of fuel tank stiffeners uh, that were laser cut. And I found that regardless of what I did, jeweler's file, um, using a reamer and kind of working it around the notch, whatever the case may be, they were cracking. Those skin, those skin stiffeners were not working. I reached out to Vance, provided photos, explained what was happening, and they sent out a new batch of skin uh, stiffeners for the fuel tanks, uh, which were of course punched not laser cut. Uh, so they took care of me. I didn't think it was worth mentioning, um, especially given that it was just a, a one-off component and uh, they took care of me. So fast forward to now with this recent statement, knowing with the experience that I have with those uh, fuel tank stiffeners of high likelihood of cracking, I'm sitting in front of 42 parts uh, for my fuselage kit. So every section involves some kind of laser cut part. A large majority of my kit is gonna have laser cut parts and looking over them, all of them share inconsistencies in the holes. Um, so with this in mind, knowing this information, I went through, I stopped the flat build yesterday and I went through, pulled everything apart, 
Now, all of the major laser cut parts, there may still be one-off small ones and baggies and whatnot, but these are, these are the big components of the fuselage. And I know we're going to be using these, even in the very first section of the fuselage, uh, there are parts here that are being used. So, knowing what Greg said, we're looking back at that forum, knowing that they took care of me in the past with the fuel tank stiffeners, um, I went ahead, reached out to Vans last night, provided a list of all these parts. Um, even broke it down later on, I, I made it a little bit easier. I broke it down by, by section and said, hey, this is going to be a long list of parts, um, but I like to have all these replaced with parts that are not going to be defective and not going to crack on me later on. Um, and I mentioned in the email, said, hey, I listed this by section. If I can just get those first few sections, whether it's 25, 6, 7, I forget the numbers. Anyways, in the first three sections of parts, it's only about, I think it's like eight or ten parts or so. Um, but just to get me rolling, uh, and I'll stay under their hair, and I know it's going to be hard with a lot of builders. There's going to be a backlog of people requesting new parts. So I figured, hey, if I could just get those early on ones, uh, that'd be great. Uh, so anyways, I never re received a response from Vance. I sat on it for a little bit, uh, then I gave him a call. Uh, so I called in. Uh, I'm not going to say any names of who I spoke with, but I eventually ended up being sent to the support side because uh, I was told that they were the ones who were handling issues with cracks. Uh, I spoke with uh, with the guy on the phone. He had mentioned he, he saw my email earlier in the day, but didn't respond to it. Uh, but said, yeah, we got your list. We're not going to be able to give you those, all those parts. It's just not going to happen. Uh, which kind of threw me off because uh, the direction or the public statement that was sent out by Greg Hughes was that any parts that builders weren't confident in, Vans is going to stand by their, their name of, of total performance, and they would be taking care of us uh, and providing that great service and that great support that we know Vans for. Uh, he mentioned, no, it's not going to happen. Uh, I almost took it as a uh, as comical uh, when I brought it up. He's saying, no, it's not going to happen. So, anyways, I was not the most impressed uh, with, with his response and kind of dug a little bit further. Yeah, so anyways, he had mentioned that there is a list from engineering that goes over parts that going forward are not, are not able to be laser cut. Uh, probably with the idea that, hey, these are critical parts, they cannot be laser cut moving forward, we can't have pimples, that, or we can't have cracks happening here. So I asked him, say, okay, great, can I have that list? Because I have 42 parts in front of me, I'm about to start working on this build, and I do not want to have to be assembling this whole plane or scrapping the whole fuselage, uh, because I worked with a part, I uh, used a part that was on that list from engineering. He said, no, the list isn't available, and doesn't exactly remember uh, what the specific parts were, but skimmed through my list of 42 parts and said, yeah, looking at things here, see some ribs, some, uh, some, um, some panels. These should be fine moving forward if you want to keep moving forward with the build. Um, so I stopped there and said, okay, should be fine. But what happens now if these crack later on down the road? Because I, my understanding is there's been a lot of builders up until this point who have built entire sections um, of, of their plane gone back later on and found serious issues. A good example, yeah, so I brought up um, that forum post. I, I saw Ryan E67, uh, also known as Bald Man Building an Airplane. Great name, by the way. Uh, but if you're not following his channel, he's building an RV14, makes great content, uh, really, really entertaining content. Uh, but anyways, great channel to follow. He had a great post, a few great posts in that thread uh, regarding parts that were assembled and later on found to have issues with cracking. And I basically expressed this concern to builder support saying, hey, how do I prevent this from happening? So I mentioned that I don't want to have uh, those issues that Ryan uh, called out here in that forum post where these parts may be defective now, may be defective in the future. Either way, uh, regardless of how you prep them, there are some serious issues with them. And, and I would highly advise you take a look at the post that Ryan made. It's a great post where he went over uh, different ways to prep the material and what he found, which is basically it's going to crack regardless, is my understanding. Uh, but anyways, great post there. Read through that. Uh, take a look at that. Subscribe to his channel. Um, but anyways, I mentioned that. Uh, what what should I do? What, what advice do you have for me for as builder support? I'm a builder. What advice do you have for me? He said, well, you sound like you are you're concerned. Uh, if, if I was that concerned, I would, I would not build until further advice is given. Uh, so anyways, that brings us to now. I'm not going to be building until further advice is given. So I asked him, okay, so if I want to do this next section, which I think is section 25, I don't know where fuselage starts, but I know there's three parts here that are going to be used in that first section of the fuselage. I said, all those parts, I went through and that list, the majority of them are in stock online. So I asked him, I said, if I was to, okay, you guys aren't going to provide the parts to me because you deem them to be safe to crack, whatever. 
Um, if I chose to just replace those individual parts, purchase them on Vans, Vans Aircraft Store, um, if I was to purchase those parts which are in stock, um, if those are going to be guaranteed to not have issues with cracking. And he said, well, no, there's no guarantee uh, that those parts are going to be any different than the parts that you have in front of you. Um, so, given all this information, I thought that was kind of silly, um, quality control wise. Yeah, so anyways, I'm not trying to have this video here be a rant video. Uh, but, given the information that I uh, learned on that call, they don't recommend repurchasing those parts because those parts that may be sent to me, even if I repurchase them, they may still have the same very consistencies that we're trying to avoid. So quality control wise, not very, very reassuring uh, from builder support that they're not still sending out faulty parts, uh, knowingly <laughs> sending out parts that may crack and may have failure in the future. Uh, so where does that leave us? Well, I am not going to be moving forward with the build. I mean, I'll finish the flap, uh, but until we know further, it sounds like this is sloppy all over. Uh, the other thing that I learned on the call is that engineering should have that statement out regarding parts and that list of parts that we should uh, be staying away from or should be replacing, whatever the case may be. Sounds like support does not interact well with engineering and given the information that we received from Gray, it also sounds like the communication side of the company doesn't work with parts or builder support because when I mentioned that thing about Gray saying, hey, any parts that we're not confident in, uh, Vans were replaced. When I mentioned that, it seemed like it was taken as a joke that no, that's not going to happen. Yeah, so anyways, this video, I didn't want to be a, a rant video by any means. I think Vans has done a phenomenal job, builder support wise, up until this point. There have definitely been pain points. Um, I've had some hard points when it comes to back ordered parts. Certain people at the company have been, you don't always get a response via email, but I have found who's responsive, who's not responsive. There's always been, a, which every company has pain points, uh, and Vans is, is operating, they have a, a large operation now. Um, but my worry here is we have one person saying, hey, we're going to replace all those parts for you. Um, there's parts maybe defective. Uh, if you have any issues, we have, you have our full support. Then you have the support side, which is basically admitting to, no, we're not going to support you. Uh, we're not going to help you out there, but hold off. We don't know information you may hear back from engineering in the future. Um, so anyways, where we're at now is I'm going to just, I guess, put the fuselage kit on hold for the time being uh, until we know more, no further. Uh, but for now, my understanding is I have parts that aren't being replaced by Vance, um, 42 parts to be exact. And looking at the average price of parts, probably about $1,000 worth of parts sitting here. Um, so, again, I don't want this video to be a come off as a rent video by any means. I think Vance has done a great job up until this point uh, with communication with support. Um, but I'm sure there are a lot of there are a lot of builders out there who are actively building planes with these laser cut parts and may not be looking precisely at them because we're all under the assumption that we have great parts from the greatest. Well, I think still the greatest kit producer out there. Yeah, so anywho, um, I don't want this video to come off as a rant video. Vance has been great up until this point. Um, I don't, don't know if it'll burn bridges, whatever, I don't care. I just want to get information out there uh, to hopefully prevent any out there from making a very expensive mistake of moving forward with parts, not knowing that laser cut parts, if you receive them in 2022, look at them. Uh, you can really, really inspect them if you've already built your, built your, uh, your fuselage, your wing, your empanage, whatever. Fully look it over. When it gets to this level, uh, when you don't know if you have a parts in front of you that may work for you, they may not work for you, I may have an effective resale value at the end here, which none of us are building for resale value. Uh, but I already seen, I've seen one post someone shared on Slack. Uh, there's already at least one post where someone is specifically looking for an empanage kit not built in 2022. So it's already becoming known that kits produced in 2022 Going forward, are these going to, is this going to be the batch of, of planes that people have to watch out for 10 years from now when you go, if you happen to, to want to sell your plane, of, oh, he built that plane in 2022, here's your, here's your half, off, half off discount for the next buyer. Uh, but anyways, I think there's serious issues and I don't think it's received the attention that it needs uh, from Vans specifically, but also from the builder community. Uh, I tried filming, uh, filming this multiple times and stopping myself. Because uh, again, Vans is, is awesome. awesome. They make great stuff. Uh, but I think this is a, a big flaw that they've had, and 
while they, on the front end, on the PR side, yeah, they had a great response and they'll take care of us and whatnot. They've taken care of me in the past. I felt good about that. Um, so now we're not being taken care of, I guess, and uh, we're kind of on your own. It's the Wild West and you're building an amateur built experimental aircraft. Assume the risk. Um, but that's a little bit hard when we uh, were receiving components expecting total performance and instead we get total uncertainty. So any of, uh, I, again, not supposed to be a bash video by, by any means. I, I know this is not gonna help to build any kind of bridges with fans, but uh, it's just something that I think people should be aware of. And I'm curious to hear from those of you out there, if you're experiencing issues, if you have a kit that you received in 2022 uh, with laser cut parts, um, if you go back and check, I know just looking through the forum, people are having issues. Again, take a look at Brian's, uh, Brian's post in that thread uh, on Vans Air Force. He went over a great, great case study where he went through and tested multiple ways and found serious issues. I know there's another person I've been chatting with uh, who's built a full wing structure with laser cut parts, and now are they going to have to disassemble that? Is it just a pile of scrap? Uh, again, these parts aren't cheap. So again, here, about a thousand dollars worth of aluminum that could either be scrapped, could not, depends who you talk to at Vans. Uh, so anyways, if you are building and you have issues, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, how you're addressing it, are you pushing forward? Are you prepping a certain way? Have you found a way to still use the material and not end up with, with, with cracks? Uh, whatever the case may be, uh, I'd love to hear from you, but I um, hope to see others out there creating content in regards to this. I think it should have a little more light being brought to it. Um, and again, I don't want to try to make fans come off as a bad name because I love the product up until this point. I've been loving the, the process, loving support, but again, every company has growing pains and I think this is one that they're gonna have to seriously work through. So anyways, I don't wanna ramble any further. Um, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Again, please comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. If you're building, thinking about building, whatever, um, love to hear what the overall community is doing uh, to, to prevent issues going forward. So. Anyway, we made it this far. Thank you so much for watching. Next video, hopefully, will, will be a little bit more fun. We'll get to uh, finishing up the flap and uh, get a flap video out for you. Uh, yeah, so anyways, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Adios.